I've switched game engines for my movement-based roguelike game focused on bow and arrow combat, not once, but twice. Why? Why would I go through the immense work of redoing everything twice just to switch game engines? So let me explain why I made such a seemingly unreasonable decision and what the future of my game will look like. I started developing this project in the Unity game engine, the engine that I've been using for several years now. It's safe to say I've become quite comfortable using Unity. Although my time working with Unity was enjoyable, at least most of the time, there are some things that hinder my workflow and make developing games increasingly frustrating. These mainly boil down to the bloated editor, the proprietary source code and the way Unity forces you to code in a certain way that can be hard to work with at times. So first of all, I've noticed that the editor is becoming more bloated and is riddled with bugs and issues. It feels like the editor is slowing development down instead of making it easier. Moreover, Unity's performance leaves much to be desired. Using the editor feels painfully sluggish. Unity has a bunch of features that are made for AAA games and are mostly no use for my games. Of course, this is nearly unavoidable for a general purpose game engine. But I feel like Unity is not really the right engine anymore for me personally. Secondly, Unity's source code is not publicly accessible. Becoming more proficient with Unity and coding in general, you begin to want to understand what's going on under the hood. Unfortunately, this is straight up impossible with closed source applications. In my opinion, as a developer who interacts and strongly relies on a tool, you should be able to see how it works and have the ability to even change it yourself if you want to. And lastly, I quite frankly don't enjoy coding in Unity anymore. I feel that the core structure of code written in Unity is not optimal for the types of games I want to develop. Unity pushes you to write code in a very certain way, heavily relying on inheritance to achieve complex game logic, which can quickly be absurdly difficult and annoying to work with. All that is not to say that Unity is inherently bad. I just feel that Unity is no longer a game engine I enjoy working with. I make games to have fun and enjoy the process. If this isn't the case, I'm not too worried to try out new things, even if that means progress on my game is slow. I hope this decision and point of view is understandable. I would love to hear your opinion on this matter. So what other game engines are out there? After doing a lot of extensive research, <clears throat> I quickly decided to try out the Godot game engine being the most prominent Unity alternative for indie developers. Furthermore, I have already tried out Godot some time ago and found it to be quite compelling. Fast and lightweight editor, completely open source and supporting multiple programming languages including their own language GDScript and also c -sharp. Great, let's jump straight in and remake my game. Getting started was straightforward. In many ways, Godot is strikingly similar to Unity. Especially the editor layout is nearly identical to that of Unity. This instantly made me feel right at home. Nonetheless, Godot follows a distinct philosophy and architecture. In summary, Unity is built upon the concept of game objects that have multiple components attached to them. Combining different components, which serve as a container for cohesive data and functionality, and making them communicate with each other enables you to create complex behavior and game logic. In Godot, the world is essentially a collection of nodes, which are similar to Unity's game objects. Instead of these nodes having multiple components, there are a bunch of different types of nodes that are built on top of each other. For example, a rigidbody node inherits from a chain of other nodes, including the base node and transform node. Creating complex game logic is done by combining and composing multiple nodes in a hierarchy. On paper, this may sound close to Unity's approach, but in practice, it feels distinctly different. So now, this is what the game looked like after a bit of time. Nothing crazy, but a decent start. Over the next couple of weeks, I continued to implement different parts of the game that already existed in the Unity version. This whole process was quite quick, because I actually decided to use C-Sharp in Godot, because that made copying over all the systems I already built in Unity much easier and faster. The game slowly started resembling the Unity version more and more and I started implementing enemies that did not exist prior. 
I even played around with some shaders to achieve a basic water effect. Looks like game development in Godot is quite nice, right? Well, it's complicated. I do understand why a lot of people love Godot so much. Learning Godot was quite enjoyable and the engine has a bunch of really promising features. The editor feels quick and reliable and the whole engine is open source. But of course, there are also some aspects I didn't like. For example, Godot focuses more on composition of nodes compared to Unity, but still heavily depends on inheritance for all nodes. This may feel refreshing when coming from Unity at first, but after some time the code is as or even more complex and difficult to work with compared to Unity. Furthermore, the stable release of Godot 4 strangely introduced a bug out of nowhere that broke my editor every time I tried editing a script. It looked like this was a known issue without any solutions that actually worked for me. I even reinstalled Godot completely and re-imported everything in a new project. Well, I had no other choice but to wait and wait and wait until this bug would get fixed. And it was during this exact time I found something that piqued my interest. Bevy, a data-driven game engine built in Rust, free and open source. I'm not really sure how exactly I stumbled upon this game engine, but coincidentally I just recently started looking into Rust, the programming language Bevy uses. Rust is a unique and interesting language designed for memory safety and high performance. Rust is also notoriously hard to learn, but the people who use it seem to love it. And after using Rust for a few months now, I can understand why. The more I use Rust, the more I love it and all its unique design decisions. And so I began also learning Bevy. But before going into detail on how Bevy is different from Unity, I want to mention that Bevy is still a young game engine, which at the moment still lacks a lot of features. I am aware that development in Bevy will likely be much more difficult, cause there are much less built-in features in Bevy compared to, for example, Unity. That being said, I think that Bevy has a ton of potential and is already quite good. Bevy is built upon the Entity Component System, or ECS for short. As the name implies, entities serve as containers for components, which in turn act as plain containers for data. Systems, on the other hand, represent functions that operate on specific selections of components and serve as the framework for coding all game logic and behavior. At first glance, this might sound really familiar. Unity has game objects and components that are attached to these game objects. Systems are what differentiate normal Unity from ECS the most. While a component in Unity might store some data and also have some methods that can act on this data, components in ECS only store data and normally do not contain functionality. Only systems can mutate components and achieve complex logic. This sounds a bit like Unity's approach, but with extra steps, doesn't it? But ECS offers several advantages in my opinion. Firstly, separating logic from data makes everything much cleaner and organized. In Unity and also Godot, you often find yourself having to reference different components inside other components to make them communicate. This essentially creates a messy web of references. And the moment one of these reference components is not there anymore, it all falls apart. You could say that this is simply bad code, which may be true, but in most cases this is quite frankly unavoidable. In contrast, using ECS you simply define your small and manageable components and then create systems that specify on which components they rely on to function. No more references between components and no problem when removing certain components because systems that rely on them will simply not execute. Also, ECS fully embraces the principle of composition over inheritance. In Unity you would often use classes that inherit from other classes to organize your code. But in ECS, you separate data into small components that are plain data without any inheritance. These components can then be composed together in a certain way to give an entity its functionality. So essentially, components describe the entity they are attached to. I hope this made it clear how ECS can have an advantage over the traditional way, especially for more complex and dynamic game logic and mechanics. No wonder Unity actually has its own implementation of ECS named DOTS. Of course, there are some trade-offs to this design approach as well, 
and ECS can be really confusing and frustrating at times because you have to think about objects and your game logic in a very unusual way. Even after using it for a few months, I still sometimes struggle to find a solution that works in ECS right away. I've trained my brain to solve problems in the Unity approach for years and it's quite difficult to get out of this habit. ECS requires you to think more data oriented and it's also encouraged to create small components instead of one huge class, which I love. In fact, I was already trying to do this as best as possible in Unity. The current version of my game in Bevy doesn't look pretty because I focused on implementing most of the important game mechanics first. This took quite some time, not only because there's a lot to implement, but mainly because I'm still learning Bevy and Rust alongside it. So that's what I've been doing for the last half a year or so. Thank you very much for watching.